Okay, what I'd like to demonstrate here is how you can take a model that has too much complexity, too many parts, too many edges, and start to turn it into something that you can use for rigging. Um, somebody sent me this model. Uh, a lot of work went into this. There's a lot of good things you could say about this model. Um, as far as the detail, and someone just really stuck to it and made a, a fairly convincing um, model. For those of you that don't recognize this, this is the Imperial Walker that was used in Star Wars. And it also can be called an ATAT. -AT. So, um, why can't we use this for rigging? And the answer is there's two, two main problems with this. Um, when you create something for a rig, especially for a robotic rig, you need to make sure that each main part is uh, set up to move independently via a bone. So when we start building bones, we probably put a bone in the body here, and a bone in this upper leg, and a bone in the lower leg, and a bone on the foot, um, and a bone up here on this mechanism that lets this thing rotate. So you'd have one of those for each leg times four. But what about this right here? And what about this? Do those all get bones? No, they don't. So what you have to do is combine all those things together. Now you can't just use group to combine them. You have to combine them in a way that's ideally watertight. Um, so what that means is watertight, how do you visualize that? This head was done pretty well. Uh, it's almost watertight. Let's, um, let's pull this head out and take a look at it. There's, the head's one of the better things on here. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes what someone did, but if you took something, let's say an ice sculpture, and let's say the head was made out of ice and you wrapped it in plastic and then you drained all the um, water out when it melted but it kept the same shape that would be and you sealed it up that would be in a sense watertight right so you wouldn't want any holes let me let me show you one that's uh let me take this back to where it was do you see i guess there's actually three things wrong here um, let's go to a wireframe view so you can see this better. And do you see how this was all just kind of positioned together? See the neck and then the head? And there's, it's really this, just a lot of parts that were placed together. And so what we really want is something that's modeled as an airtight model for each main portion of the uh, assembly. And then what we would do, um, like we did with, uh, if you saw the spider tutorial, is we would take all those different parts and we would uh, attach them all into one editable poly, and that editable poly that we can then rig with bones or with a biped. So, what's the other problem with this model? Uh, let's go back to uh, smooth view. Look at all the wasted edges and faces and vertices for that matter. Um, like you can see here, this is all one separate model, just sitting there. Here's another one. So each one of these, in fact, every almost everything on here, you can find places to improve it. Let's look at just one of these really close up. Can you see how the diameter here is consistent until this point? And then from here to here, it's pretty consistent. And then from here to here, it's consistent. What that means is that these um, edges have been wasted. So let me get rid of the uh, mapping on this thing. Let's just focus on this model for a second. And let's see what we can do to simplify this. Because every vertex is going to cost you in the rigging process. It's, it's one more thing to keep track of. And it's going to slow down your renders. And if this is being used in a game, it's going to add to your polygon count. And it's going to make your game slow. And there's other reasons too. I'm just those are just a couple off the top of my head. So uh, we'll just take this thing. We'll right click, convert it to an editable poly again, and we'll grab this edge. So we got one edge on there, right? And I'm going to go to um, loop. And so we've looped all the way around it, 
and now I'm going to hold down my control key and click on remove. And what that does is what's called a clean remove. Let me show you one that's not clean so you can compare it. We'll grab another one and we'll do a loop and we'll just click on remove without holding control down. Okay, it looks like it's the same thing, doesn't it? Well, let's activate the vertex sub-object mode. Do you see how those vertices are still there? And these are gone? So that's the difference between a clean remove and an unclean remove. And that clean remove was just added, I can't remember what release, but I think release 7. So anyway, it's pretty easy to go in through here and just uh, grab this whole loop and control remove or control backspace. We'll also do the same thing. So you'd have to go through here and do that. And I haven't, I can't remember if you can do all these at once or not because it's been a little while. But uh, let's just try it. If I grab this and this and this and this and this and this, and we say loop, and we say control backspace, we've got a vertex mode. So we can do quite a bit at once. So in a few minutes, you can probably clean this thing up. And, that, and then once this one's clean, just make a mirror or a copy of it to make this other one. Don't redo all that work. Um, okay, what else can we say about this before we get out of here? Um, I think I mentioned how this stuff is kind of um, just setting next to each other. They're all just kind of put together. Um, how would you fix that? Well, what you'd have to do is move this back and weld it to the surrounding vertices. What you'd have to do is attach it to this object and then weld it in place. The problem is there's a lot more points on this than there are on this head. So the two aren't going to weld together well. It wasn't really modeled for that. So that's going to be a little bit of a trick. And so you probably end up remodeling it. In fact, the more times you go through this little cycle of modeling things and rigging them, unwrapping them, texturing them, animating them, all that stuff, you'll find that it'll change how you model. And uh, it'll change how you unwrap. Everything will change. So you have to go through the cycle a few times and kind of learn the hard way.